Recording. Two channels started. Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be an audio video test of the Viofo A229 Duo. I'm speaking to you live directly to the camera. Both channels are filming at 2K at 30 frames per second and the bit rate is set to maximum. And I have the CPL filter installed on the front camera and there is no available CPL filter for the rear camera. started. Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be an audio video test of the Viofo A229 Duo. I'm speaking to you live directly to the camera. Both channels are filming at 2K at 30 frames per second and the bit rate is set to maximum. And I have the CPL filter installed on the front camera and there is no available CPL filter for the rear camera. Recording. Two channels started. Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be an audio video test of the Viofo A229 Duo. Right now I'm speaking to you live directly to the camera. Both channels are recording at 2K at 30 frames per second and the bit rate is set to maximum. And I have uh, removed the CPL filter from the front camera and there is no CPL filter available for the rear camera. started. Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be an audio video test of the Viofo A229 Duo. Right now I'm speaking to you live directly to the camera. Both channels are recording at 2K at 30 frames per second and the bit rate is set to maximum. And I have uh, removed the CPL filter from the front camera and there is no CPL filter available for the rear camera. Recording. Two channels started. Hey guys, welcome back. First off, this is a sponsored review. The nice folks at Viofo were kind enough to send me the all new just released A229 Duo. And they also sent these optional accessories like the hardwire kit that is required to fully enable parking mode, a CPL filter which drastically reduces windshield glare, a Viofo brand industrial MLC memory card, and a Viofo brand external microphone. So keep that in mind. And second, this is a collaboration with Retro Car Guy 530. Robert was also sent a pre-production test unit of the A229 and he uploaded his original review three months ago and today he's publishing his three-month update. 
So I recommend you stop watching my video and go watch his videos first because I'm almost positive they're going to be a lot better than this one. So I'll put a link to his videos down below. And I have a feeling my video is going to run a little long, so I've put chapters at the bottom of your screen. So just go ahead and skip to the uh, chapter of the information you're looking for. And uh, I'm going to put links to everything we're going to talk about down below in the description box. Okay, so first I'd like to talk about my full quality test footage playlist. And then I want to give you a brief uh, overview of, v of VOFO's dual channel uh, history. And then I want to talk about the features and specifications and then go over my heat testing, uh, power consumption, uh, memory cards, Wi-Fi, transfer speeds, and parking mode. And then we'll finish it up with pros and cons and final thoughts. Okay, so uh, the test footage that you watched at the beginning of this video, even though it was filmed at 2K at 30 frames per second, I don't have proper editing software, and so when I glue these clips together, uh, they get mashed down to 1080p. So what that basically means is you only saw half the resolution of what this camera can really do. So if you want to see a better representation and a truer example of what the camera footage will look like, is uh, view my raw footage that I've uploaded. And I'll put a link to that playlist down below. And keep in mind, um, my test vehicle is a 2004 model year, uh, so it's got almost 20 years of rock chips on the original windshield. And during the daytime, it doesn't look too bad, but at nighttime, you can really see it when I pass under a street lamp. Okay, so uh, a quick overview of Viofo's dual channel uh, dash cam history. So in 2018, we got the original 129 Duo, and that was good for 1080p front and rear. And in 2019, we had somewhat of a quantum leap. We got 4K in the front camera, and on the rear camera, we got that same, same 1080p. And then in 2020, the, the next year, we got our first high frame rate, 60 frames per, 60 frames per second camera, but they had to drop the resolution down to 2K. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because this 4K looks fantastic during the daytime, but in low light and nighttime conditions, uh, the image quality may degrade a little bit. And the 2K uh, image sensor is not so much affected by low light and nighttime. And uh, on that same camera, the 129 Plus, we got our first uh, separate chipset processor in the rear camera, which uh, I believe, based on my testing, it really helped uh, keep the heat generation out of the front camera. So it, the, the, the rear processor helped the front camera stay cooler by dividing uh, the workload of the processing. But again, we got that same uh, 1080p rear camera. Now fast forwarding to 2022 with the A229 Duo, uh, we've got a, another uh, step forward with 2K in the rear. Uh, but we uh, did not carry over this, the high frame rate, 60 frames per second, that I was hoping uh, from the Plus. Okay, so now uh, let's go over uh, features and specifications of the 229. So we got the tried and true Sony uh, IMX 335 image sensor. Uh, for both cameras, front and rear. And we get the upgraded Novatech 96580 uh, processor, uh, which is good for 2K at 30 frames per second, in an aspect ratio of 16.9, which is standard widescreen, uh, which is what you're watching right now. And the bit rate is 29 and 25, uh, front and rear, megabit per second. Uh, the lens aperture is f1.6 for the front and f1.8 for the rear. And the lens adjustment, they've brought it down to 65 degrees for the front camera. And this is a big step. We've got 360 degree rotation on the rear camera now. So let me show you what I mean by that. So this is the uh, 229 here. And I've got the uh, camera lens uh, pointed at true north. And if we adjust the lens down, we can see that we've got about 65 uh, degrees of adjustment. And I find that a little bit disappointing because 
on the previous 129 plus you can see I've got the uh, lens at 12 o'clock high north and when I adjust it all the way down we've got 90 degrees of adjustment so they've reduced uh, the adjustment a little bit and it's always been my complaint that uh, since this camera is going to be on the front windshield I would really appreciate it if they would have uh, adjust made the adjustment so that it can show the interior of the car and of course that's not what this camera is for but anytime you can add functionality it's going to add value to the camera so hopefully the next generation they can point this uh, make the adjustment so we can point it towards uh, the inside of the car and on the rear camera uh, this is the previous generation 129 it was a uh, wedge shape and uh, right now it's at the uh, high north uh, 12 o'clock position and it can adjust out to 90 degrees and it's mounted on a, uh, a two-piece design with the, this on the windshield and then you put this uh, to mount it and I'd like to show you the rear camera but it's stuck on my rear window right now uh, but here's a photo of it it's a one-piece design where it sticks to the window but in turn it gives us a 360 degree rotation so if you wanted to you could point it towards the interior of the car and um, uh, the field of view is 140 degrees for the front 160 degrees for the rear the video codec is H264 which is very nice because it will that means your files will play on any computer as opposed to the H265 that requires a more expensive higher performance computer uh, to watch your files and the format is MP4 it has loop record for 1, 2, 3, 5, 10 minutes and off uh, the max SD card size is 256 and now we get a bigger uh, 2.4 inch LCD screen whereas before we had 2 inch on the 129 and this uh, 119 mini has the 1.5 inch screen and we've been upgraded to 5 uh, multicolor status LEDs And what that means is that this is the uh, 129 here, and we just had three red uh, status LEDs for record, Wi Fi, and microphone. And on the 229, we've been upgraded to a red power LED and a blue GPS LED. And then they've changed the color of the microphone and the Wi Fi to blue. And the poor Mini here, it doesn't get the GPS light. And uh, we've been upgraded to voice notifications, and this is really nice. The previous cameras, whenever there was an error or a malfunction, it would just beep at you. Uh, but now uh, there's a little lady in the box, and she'll tell you exactly what's wrong. So I'd like to show you what that sounds like right now. Please insert a memory card. Memory card error. Please format the card. Memory card format failed. Memory card format successful. Voice recording disabled. Voice recording enabled. Wi Fi enabled. Wi Fi disabled. Wi Fi connected. Video protected. Parking recording started. Recording two channels started. All right, and it still uses a super capacitor, not a lithium battery and uh, we've been upgraded to a USB Type-C power cable and this is kind of a big uh, th this is a good thing for two reasons number one it helps in installation because now uh, because the connector is uh, ambidextrous uh, they put these uh, right angle connectors on there and so you can run the connection from either side of the windshield whereas before it had a mini and we got this uh, straight connector and it increased the uh, the distance to where you could mount this from the top of your windscreen so now you can mount the camera just a little bit higher to get it out of your uh, point of view and the second benefit of the Type-C USB cable is in general uh, Type-C cables have the capability to run more current and power through them and this should really help cut down on malfunctions from power starvation when people don't use the factory uh, USB cable and they get a longer cable 
that is uh, aftermarket and is of cheaper quality or thinner gauge so uh, that should help out with that and we we've been upgraded to the super slim coaxial uh, cable for the rear camera whereas before it was a much thicker USB cable so that'll help installation and we get the uh, second generation enhanced Wi-Fi 2.4 gig and 5 gigahertz uh, band and uh, I've tested it and it is four times as fast as downloading files and it also helps the uh, buffering when you're watching v videos on your smartphone so there's no more buffering and we get a new uh, five pin GPS mount uh, that can transmit uh, coordinates your speed and it does date and time synchronization and the fifth pin uh, now it has the capability uh, when used with the hardwire kit it can power down the GPS module which will further reduce power consumption and it should increase the longevity of the GPS module because it's not constantly looking for a satellite and the operating temperature specification is 5 degrees Fahrenheit to 149 degrees Fahrenheit and the warranty is one year and you get six months extra with product registration and uh, they've got uh, what I consider top tier customer service tech support and warranty claims and you just head over to vofo.com to learn more about that and we get uh, three parking modes with this camera buffered motion detection time lapse and low bitrate but again that requires the uh, $18 hardwire kit and we get a uh, optional uh, it has Bluetooth uh, for the optional Bluetooth remote and this is nice because uh, if you have the camera installed on your windshield and you've got your hands on the steering wheel and you can't find the emergency lock button on the camera uh, you can mount this uh, uh, little button uh, somewhere close to your steering wheel so you can just uh, lift your finger off to hit the uh, record button and this can also come in handy is if you have a different uh, mounting location where you're going to put the front camera on the rear window and then put the uh, rear camera on the front window because you can't reach the uh, emergency lock button because it has a range of 15 feet and uh, another thing another optional accessory is this external microphone which can uh, increase the overall audio quality and um, let me show you uh, what that looks like right now I recorded a demo and I'm gonna use the footage from the rear camera and I adjusted the rear camera towards the car so let me show that to you now recording two channels started hey guys welcome back this is gonna be an audio test of the internal versus the external microphone and I've also got the rear camera turned around to show the interior of the car so right now I'm going to plug in the microphone and we'll see if we can hear the difference. External microphone connected. Recording. Two channels started. Okay, I just plugged in the microphone and it gives you a nice uh, voice notification to let you know it got connected. So hopefully, uh, and I've got the microphone mounted to the headliner uh, in between the two uh, sun visors right up here. So hopefully we can hear the difference. So once again, this was an audio test of the internal versus the external microphone. All right, now I wanna talk about my gentle heat testing. And this does not simulate real world parking mode scenarios performed in direct sunlight, but it's easier for me to test under controlled conditions to see how well the camera can dissipate heat and compare test data with other cameras. So I set up the camera in normal recording mode, 2K, 30 frames per second, both channels, maximum bit rate, 29, 25 megabit per second, front and rear. And where I live, uh, we've been having a, 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 bit, a bit of a heat wave from July 23rd to August 23rd, where the temperatures reach uh, over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's about what it gets in my garage. And I uh, get the cameras running in my car, uh, in the in the garage and I start the camera at 6 a.m. and I let it run for 14 hours non-stop continuously until 8 p.m. and the highest temperature I recorded during these heat waves was 106 degrees Fahrenheit and in my garage it gets to 100 degrees Fahrenheit 
and the A229 front camera reached a max temperature of 146 and the rear camera reached 104 deg 117 degrees and the max operating spec is up to 149 and I measure that uh, just with a basic uh, infrared uh, pyrometer and uh, one thing I want to mention on that is the previous uh, 129 camera that I tested uh, the front camera ran at 140 degrees so six degrees cooler but the rear camera would run at 160 degrees so that's uh, 20 that's 43 degrees hotter so they've brought down the temperature of the rear camera and only increased the temperature of the front camera by six degrees and they've only have to deal with one processor now there's no second processor in the rear camera so that should help with um, system complexity and at the end of each day uh, I checked or I checked the camera throughout the day and the camera did not shut off it did not stop recording and I observed no malfunctions of any kind and at the end of the day I pulled the SD card and I put it in my computer and I check all the files to make sure they're present and playable so I, uh, during a month of testing in the heat uh, letting it run for 14 hours a day I observed no malfunctions All right, now I want to talk about uh, power consumption. So again, using the same uh, recording settings, I measured the A298, the 229 Duo at 385 milliamps at 12.6 volts, which is 4.8 watts. And for comparison, the, the 119 Mini that I've got over here is a single channel camera and it's only 250 milliamp at 12.6 volts, which is 3.1 watts. And that's just to give you a comparison between uh, two similar performing ca cameras with similar performance specifications, but the Mini is a one channel and the Duo is a two channel. And the next thing I want to know is how long the camera will run on a USB power bank uh, like this. And I've got a power bank here and it's rated at 20,000 milliamp hours at 3.7 volts or 74 watt hours. And the, the A2 the 229 Duo it ran for 15.5 hours and I did the same test on the Mini and it ran for 21 hours uh, 21.5 hours and then I tested uh, I verified the capacity of my USB power bank with this uh, power tester and you can check uh, the capacity of your uh, power bank and you can also check the uh, amperages and wattages of whatever you're running so that's kind of nice and so what I found is my power bank has degraded over time and I've gone from 74 watt hours down to 70 watt hours and it took 10 hours and 35 minutes to recharge this uh, USB power bank and, and keep in mind uh, these uh, power banks are just for testing purposes uh, you really don't want to use a uh, lithium ion or a lithium polymer power bank uh, in a parking mode situation where you leave it in a hot parked car because I think we've all seen those videos where a Samsung phone uh, exploded and burned the car down to the ground because it got too hot so that's why we have these dedicated uh, dash cam battery packs that have a different chemistry it's called uh, lithium iron phosphate and these are pretty much guaranteed never to explode in your car uh, when used as a dash cam battery pack. Uh, the problem with these is they cost uh, $400 whereas you can get a power bank for $10 and then it also does increase uh, a little bit of uh, system complexity because you've got a hardwired into the vehicle but depending on your application that might be worth it. And uh, now let's talk about um, uh, data file size and Wi-Fi transfer speeds so I set up the uh, camera with the same settings and I installed the uh, 64 gig VOFO card and at the max re uh, max bit rate of 29 and 25 front and rear I get uh, 2 hours and 23 minutes of record time and I'll let you uh, pause the camera to see the record times on the rest of the bit rates and uh, using the uh, maximum bitrate for a one minute video it generates a 226 megabyte size file for the front and then the rear is 184 megabit megabyte 
and then I wanted to test how fast it takes to download these clips to my cell phone and on the 2.4 gig band uh, it took 42 seconds and on the super fast 5 gigahertz band it only took 18 seconds and I'm using a iPhone SE 2020 and for comparison I did this same test on the previous 129 plus and it took over 82 seconds uh, to download a 200 megabit file so it's more than four times as fast uh, so that's going to be uh, really nice for people who want to download footage uh, to their phone to watch it and a quick word on uh, memory cards uh, VOFO has publicly released a recommendation for their uh, memory cards and that's of course the VOFO brand the Samsung Pro Endurance the SanDisk Max Endurance and that is not to be confused with the SanDisk High Endurance. And I actually have a High Endurance card here, or a, yeah, High Endurance. And that's what prompted that uh, uh, memory card malfunction on the voice notifications. So if you're going to get this one, make sure you get the Max, not the uh, High Endurance for the 229. And they also recommend the SanDisk Extreme. And then they've got a list here of cards that they do not recommend. And uh, when you're buying your uh, memory cards, you, uh, you might want to get them directly from the manufacturer, Samsung or SanDisk, to prevent getting a counterfeit card. Or uh, what I found on Amazon, if you, uh, when you're looking at the listing, uh, look down over here and what you're looking for is shipped from and sold by Amazon. If it says anything other than that, like a third party vendor, uh, you might want to stay away from those uh, because they might be having counterfeits. Okay, so now I want to talk about uh, parking mode. Uh, what is parking mode? Why does it exist? And what are the pros and cons? So my first two uh, favorite things about parking mode is has to do with power conservation and memory card data con conservation. And to explain that, I've got three scenarios here. So let's say uh, you're the type of user that leaves your house and goes to the grocery store for one hour and you come back home and you park your car. So you would need one hour of parking mode surveillance or parking mode protection. And you can pretty much get that done with the uh, hardwire kit just running off your standard vehicle battery. Now the next scenario would be a, uh, a commuter that gets to work and parks the car at the office at 7 a.m. and uh, leaves it unattended till 5 p.m. So they're gonna need 10 hours of parking protection. Now this is when you'd want to uh, start looking into getting a dash cam battery pack because um, your vehicle battery might not have enough power uh, to run that camera for, tw for 10 hours and then still start your car. Now the next uh, example is an extreme uh, user that parks his car at the airport and takes a seven day business trip or a seven day vacation and he's going to need seven days worth of parking protection. So this is a, an example of when you'd want to start looking at a cloud camera where it can record and then send footage to the cloud. And if that's your application, uh, VOFO doesn't have cloud cameras. It's just not their business plan. And you're going to have to do some soul searching and head over to South Korea and check out brands like Blackview and Thinkware. And those cost a little bit more money. And uh, my third reason I like uh, parking uh, mode is whenever there's a, an event like a, a motion event where somebody walks in front of your car or a G-Shock event where somebody physically bumps it, uh, it's, going to it's going to automatically lock those video files and it's going to put it in a separate folder so it's very easy to find those files where if you were just running the camera in normal recording mode uh, you would have to watch the entire footage to find uh, the incident of what you're looking for. Now the fourth thing is kind of a con. It does increase some in installation complexity. Um, and what I mean by that is if you're comfortable uh, in installing your own car stereo, this is a uh, uh, a wiring harness for a car stereo. This has a 16 pin uh, multicolored uh, wire harness and so you have if you have uh, no problem hooking this up uh, hooking up this uh, parking uh, hardwire kit should be no problem but if you look at this and then you're, you're gonna want to uh, avoid this and take your car to a uh, 
uh, professional installer, that might be something you want to think about. Uh, so keep that in mind. And uh, I want to talk about this uh, hardwire kit. I, I really do consider this a modern engineering marvel because back in my day, uh, we did not have cool things like this, and it took five separate components to bit to accomplish uh, what this thing does. And what I mean by that is this uh, hardwire kit. It's a wire harness uh, from here to here. It's a Type C USB cable from here to here. And this little black box in the middle here, it it works like a traditional uh, four pin relay to control the camera from turning on and turning off. And then it also has a built in low voltage cutoff device. So when it senses the battery voltage is getting too low, it will cut power uh, to the camera. So when you come back to your car, you can start your engine. And a quick word on that is it's got these uh, selectable uh, power values from 11.8 volts to 12.4 volts. And keep in mind, uh, every vehicle battery is different. Uh, this is a, a, a battery. Uh, this is a battery for my 04 Crown Vic, and it has a capacity, or it has a 1,000 cranking amps, and it weighs 46 pounds. And this is a battery from a 92 Honda Civic, and it has 625 cranking amps, and it weighs 27 pounds. And I tried uh, calculating a conversion from cranking amps to amp hours or watt hours, and there's really not an easy way to do it. All I'm trying to say is uh, the, the, each, each battery is going to have a different capacity. And a second, a second caveat to that is it depends on how new and modern your car is. Uh, if you've got an old car like mine, it has uh, two computers, a PCM and a lighting control module. And those modules uh, stay awake up to 30 minutes after you shut the car off. And if you're driving a brand new modern uh, BMW or Mercedes, uh, those cars have up to 200 modules that will stay awake up to an hour and then some of them never go to sleep. So that can really affect uh, how fast your battery can drain. Okay, uh, now let's uh, talk about uh, fin or finish it up with pros and cons and final thoughts. So my pros uh, for this is it has excellent image quality and that's due to the high bit rates. Um, pretty much all these cameras you see on uh, Amazon, they're, they're pretty much all made with the same components and what sets the VFO cameras apart is the high uh, bit rates and then their stellar uh, customer service and uh, firmware updates. And based on my heat testing, uh, I'm going to say this camera has excellent reliability and durability and excellent heat dissipation. And what I mean by that is we got some extra vents on here. I want to show you that. So on the preview... Oh, no. So on the previous uh, 129, we just got this faux uh, design here. I thought that was a vent, but that's not a vent. And on the 229, we get an actual intake vent that's going to draw cool air in here. And then on the back, we can see we got an additional uh, exhaust vent here at the top. And then we've got that same vent right here on the bottom as the 129. And on the side, uh, we've got the same... Uh, side exhaust vent here is the 129 and then we've got two more additional side vents here. This right here is just a speaker hole for the uh, 129. And uh, same thing on this side. We get the same side vent here but we got two more additional vents on the uh, side right here. Okay, my next uh, pro is this, uh, this company, uh, Viofo, they really stand behind their product with excellent tech support and constant firmware updates. And I'm going to say it has an excellent smartphone app. I've uh, been using it for the past two years and it's never failed me. And if you look at the uh, smartphone apps on all dash cameras, they're pretty much one star. And I don't have any proof, but I have a feeling these people that are giving these apps one star it's because they don't fully understand the difference between Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, and, cellu and cellular data, and how they have to configure those four options in order to get the dash cam to work. And another reason is uh, a lot of people forget to update 
the firmware of the camera and then update the app to the latest version. And um, my next pro is that super fast 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which is four times faster. Uh, my next pro is that USB Type-C power cable, uh, the super slim coax cable for the rear, uh, voice notifications, and that rear camera that has 360 degree adjustment. And that optional external microphone, it really does improve the audio. And as far as cons, I'm going to say uh, I really enjoyed the 60 frames per second option on the previous 129, and now we just get 30. And uh, there is no available CPL filter for the rear camera, and it could really use one. And uh, there's my last con is there's no included SD card. And I say this for two reasons. One, uh, it could be really helpful for a diagnostic and testing purposes because when you have a malfunction and you're requesting service, uh, the first seed of doubt planted is what kind of memory card are you using. And the second reason is to use it to perform uh, firmware updates. Because I found uh, when you're doing a firmware update, it's easier on the camera to use a smaller uh, size memory card than a 256 card. And my final thoughts for this camera is uh, 2K for the rear channel. It really is a big step in the right direction. And uh, this camera, I'm going to call it the, the new benchmark for 2K dual channel dash cams. And what I mean by that is no matter what 2K uh, dash cam you buy, uh, this uh, 229 can be used to compare it with uh, based on the image quality, reliability, durability, heat dissipation, and excellent tech support and firmware updates. And um, I, I came up with a selfish wish list uh, to improve this camera for the next generation and this is just for my selfish uh, reasons. Uh, I would like to see identical bit rates front and rear. I would like to see identical field of view 140 degrees front and rear. Uh, I'd like that 60 uh, frames per second option back. I would like the uh, GPS module to be fully internal like the T130 instead of being in the mount and uh, in order to make room for that I would gladly give up the LCD screen uh, because the Wi-Fi app is here, we really don't need that. Uh, I would like a, a CPL filter on the rear camera, and I would like the front camera to have 180 degree adjustability so we can uh, sw switch it around and uh, film the front or the interior of the car with the front camera. And last, uh, I would like to add a single voice command uh, to, to work the emergency lock button, and what that'll do is instead of having to uh, buy this additional remote uh, that they sell for twenty dollars we can just say lock video and it will uh, lock that file and we don't have to worry about uh, the battery dying in this or replacing the battery alright uh, that's pretty much it thanks for watching we'll see you next time bye bye